So first of all, hello everyone. Yeah. So well, before getting into my talk, I wanted to ask you some couple of questions. So, yep, yep, yeah. So have you ever wondered how you are able to remember the places that you have visited? Have you ever wondered how you are able to navigate in a space, say from a location, um, say this location, to a destination, it can be your home, it can be your workplace, or it can be, say, you want to grab a coffee, you need to go to Starbucks. We do all these kinds of navigation in our day-to-day -day life so seamlessly, right? But the question is, how? What makes us so efficient in, for us to navigate in our space? What gives our spatial memories? Don't say Google Map, okay? <laughs> so the answer is brain. Brain is the key player behind this, because, because, come on, yeah, because brain has got a navigation system inside it. Yes, I do mean that. Brain has got a GPS system inside it. It's not even your phone or it's not even your car has a GPS system. Your brain also has a GPS system. It is this GPS system that makes us so smart enough to navigate in our space. It is this GPS system that gives us our spatial memories. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Now let's get into the business. At the first place, let me ask you, why does brain form a navigation circuit in it? Because navigation is important, it is critical. We are all moving animals. We move or we navigate for a multitude of reasons. In search of food, for mating, yeah, except, sure. <laughs> <laughs> there are thousands of reasons. It's not only us, even the animals also navigate. So it's not a surprise that brain formed a navigation system inside it to make our navigation so efficient. So where is this GPS system located inside the brain? It is located right above your ears. This is known as the temporal lobe of the brain. So if you dig inside the temporal lobe, you will come across with a C-shaped structure. It is known as hippocampus. So hippocampus is going to be the hero of this talk because you will hear this word again and again and again from me. So hippocampus is attributed to the functions of learning and memory. So if a person has a damage in its hippocampus, he or she will be afflicted with shorter memory loss. So hippocampus and its associated structures are considered to be the GPS system of the brain. Don't take it for granted. I will show you how hippocampus qualifies itself as a GPS system. So for that, I'm going to play a movie. So um, a short prelude to the movie, well before playing it. So in the movie, you can see a rat that is just running inside a box. So electrodes are connected to the hippocampus of the rat. So whenever the hippocampus gets active, a red dot is placed at that particular location. So whenever you see red dots in the movie, that means hippocampus is active at that particular location. All right, now let's get into the movie. Yeah, so you can see the rat running inside a box. Uh, its hippocampus is connected, so you can see that wire. Oh, you can see that red dots over there. So that means hippocampus was active at that particular location. Yeah, so actually the rat is chasing for some chocolate. So you can see the experiment of putting some chocolates here and there, just to make it navigate in its space. Man, it's so voracious about the chocolate. <laughs> so smart, yeah. <laughs> Navigates better than me. <laughs> yeah, baby, come on. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. What can you infer from this movie? Anyone? Yes, you nailed it. You literally nailed it. I love you. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so hippocampus was active at a very confined region of the space. So if I form a heat map, you can see that hippocampus is active at that particular location. It's more reddish over there. So if I record the activity from other regions of the hippocampus, it looks like this. So one region is active at one place, other regions are active at some other places. What does that mean? It means hippocampus gives me the information about where I am right now, my current position. So there are some hippocampal neurons in my brain say, hey dude, you are at this place. So if I move from this place to another place, another region of the hippocampus will say, you have changed your location, right now you are in this place. So this is very important information for me to navigate because I should know where I am, right? 
All right, so coming back to the temporal lobe. So we have the hippocampus that gives the information about my position. Just outside the hippocampus, there is a region known as post-subiculum. It gives me the information about the direction in which I'm moving. So if I'm moving in this, in this direction, that particular brain system will say, OK, dude, you are moving in this direction. The minute I change my direction, it says, you have changed your direction. This is your, this is your new direction. OK, so it's, it gives me the information about the direction. Yeah. So on the region, just close to the hippocampus, it is known as entorhinal cortex. It gives me the information about the distance that I have covered. See, I have all the information, my position, the direction, and the distance. And they just join together, or they amalgamate, and they form, they form the neural GPS system. And yep, I'm all set, ready to navigate. OK. So the objective of my research is to crack the principle behind the <laughs> functioning of this neural GPS system in 3D space, not in 2D space. Why 3D space? Because we live in a 3D world. Our world is not a flat one, right? So I want to study how brain codes for the navigation in a 3D space. So coming from a theoretical background, what I made was I simulated an animal to just fly inside a box, not to just run or crawl on a surface, as you saw in the video, just to fly inside a box. Then I took its flight movement data in that 3D space, and I gave that data to a big network. So I call this network as hierarchical neural network. Just forget about that network. Treat it like an input-output system. So the input to the network is the flight movement of the animal, and the output of the network is something like this. So not something like this, exactly this. So <laughs> That bluish color represents the activity of the network. So you can see that over the course of time, so the time is running at the top of the box, the acti activity of the network gets confined, 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 and it, it will get active to a very localized volume of the space. So finally, it looks like this. So this bluish red color represents the activity of the network, and that gray random curve represents the flight movement of the animal. So this is one activity, this is another activity, third activity, fourth activity. The network is able to give the position of the animal in a 3D space. So the best part is all these activities are reported from the actual brain of a flying bat. So it's like Batman coming to me and saying, OK, dude, you are going in a good direction. Your theory is coming true. It's really motivating. <laughs> so. Apart from these 3D place cells, they are known as place cells because they give the information about the place where I am right now. My theory also predicted the existence of height cells. At what height the animal is flying? Because it's very important, right? When it's flying, it should know at what height it is flying. So right now, I am testing this prediction in an actual bat. So I'm coming from a bat lab in bioengineering department. So we have around like 300 flying bats in our lab. So I catch one bat. I put electrodes in its brain. So we have a flight room. Literally, we have a flight room. I just make it to fly. And I look, it, I, I look for its neural activity, Okay, whether the brain is coding for the height in which it is flying. If it is coding, it's bingo, because I already predicted that. <laughs> OK, so what are the implications of my research? Firstly, my theory can be applied to, a, to the robotics. We can make a robot with spatial memory who thinks, oh my god, I visited this Golden Gate Bridge last year. It was so awesome. It is incredible. <laughs> Such kind of spatial memories can enhance the navigation ability of a robot. We can make its navigation on par with human-like navigation. Secondly, we can deal with spatial memory disorders, so like Alzheimer's disease. So it's a very devastating neurospatial disorder. So a person afflicted with Alzheimer's disease, he or she becomes oblivious to the space. They do not know where they are. It affects their navigation. Their navigation becomes very poor. So if you know the principle behind which the spatial memories are formed, you can deal with these kinds of diseases much effectively. Yeah. So finally, the takeaway message from my presentation is that we all have a GPS system inside our brain. That is hippocampus. And hippocampus has already coded this place for us. So the very next time when you come to this place, this place, and when you remember this place, give a thumbs up to your hippocampus. Thank you very much for your time and for your attention. Thank you.
Give it up for Cardiac. Thank you so much. Woo! Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Love you.